بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم نحمده ونصلي ونسلم على رسوله الكريم سيد الأنبياء والمرسلين وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين إلى يوم الدين أما بعد ولله على الناس حج البيت من استطاع إليه سبيلا It is the right of Allah over the people to make Hajj pilgrimage of this house. If one is accepted for Hajj and makes a niyyah to perform Hajj, we have to realize this acceptance happened a long while ago. And we have to make a dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give us tawfiq to fulfill this requirement. So although it seems you are called on earth, remember you were called in the heavens before this. So this is a great favor, this is a great bounty, this is a great na'mat of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when somebody has a valuable treasure, they value it, they look after it, and they make sure they know what to do with it. Given a expensive pearl to a person who thinks it's a ordinary marble and he will play with it, Eventually all these expensive marbles will get lost and the day he realizes they were pearls, he will cry a lot. Every moment from now on should be a moment where we take this as an opportunity. We have got a direct invitation from Allah Rabbul Alameen. And when somebody is a guest and depending on the host, so you were invited, the wife said, I've prepared something for you. How do you arrive at home? What preparations do you make? Then she tells you it's a special occasion. What preparations do you make? Then some friends invite you. What preparation you make? Based on the people, the time, the place, the occasion, does the guest dress and prepare accordingly? You are told you are invited by the president of the country. How do you prepare? So based on the person, do, does one prepare? Allah is calling me. Based on this calling, Rabbul Alameen, Rabbin Nas, Thus great Allah Rabbul Alameen Jalla Jalaluhu is personally inviting me. I need to be prepared accordingly. And that's why the definition of Hajj is Al-Qast. Uh, Al-Qast ila kulli shay. In Nihaya. Intending something when you intend. So when a person is going for Hajj, what's his intention? Inshallah, we'll get into that. What is his intention will be the result. If I am going just for the sake of fulfilling a requirement, then he will fulfill his requirement. But if he changes his intention, it is the command of Allah and I'm going to find my Allah. So the commander is giving a command. I am not there only for the command, but I'm there to find the commander. If we have the value of the commander, we will have the value of the command. So likewise, Alama ibn Hajjaz has mentioned Al-Qast and in Sharia, Al-Qast ila al-bayt al-haram bi-a'malin makhsusatin. 
So an intention a person is making going to this Mubarak house with those specific amal that will draw one close to Allah. So a person needs to first identify the maqsad, the objective, the end goal. Why am I embarking on this journey? A person can travel at the speed of lightning in the wrong direction, they will never reach their destination. But if they travel in the correct direction at a speed of a tortoise, they will definitely reach their destination. So we need concentration, we need mental toughness and these are the criteria which will identify the margins of victory. Remember this journey is no ordinary journey and it's a journey to be victorious over nafs, victorious over shaitan and to make sure we procure victory in Akhirah. A Haji should return from his Hajj with the flag of success in Deen. So we need to focus and focus is more important than intelligence. So results do not are not fruitful if we focus on results. You get results by focusing on the action those actions that produce results. What actions is Allah and His Rasul? And it comes back to the point of ilm and knowledge that a person not only in Hajj but in every aspect of deen, I need to have a strong bond and relationship with the ulama a haq to make sure that this purpose and this objective why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has selected me for, I comply it to the maximum. A ordinary person who is doing an ordinary insignificant job, make sure there is criteria, there is targets and he knows what he has to do. How come in the dunya we are knowledgeable? How come in the dunya when you want to build a superstructure, we go to the best of the best to make sure that this building results in the best. But when it comes to deen, then we are laxed and we are not focused. So with regards to Hajj, the, the, the way which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has described Firstly, in all other ibadat, aqimu salah the command is there, inna salata kanat ala al-mu'minin kitabam mawquta. So this is a command to establish salah. Likewise, kutiba alaykumu siyam, fast has been made compulsory upon you. But Likewise, zakat, wa'atu zakah. But when it came to Hajj, Allah started with His name and Allah stipulated the reward and prize. Yes, each amal has its benefits and each amal has specific requirements. In Hajj, Ya Allah is saying, that I am calling you and you come in to meet me and in this journey to meeting me there will be a lot of difficulties but if you want a treasure and you want to find Allah then there will be a lot of obstacles, there will be a lot of challenges. So, وَلِلَّهِ عَلَى النَّاسِ يَا عَلَى النَّاسِ 
is saying everybody, all of humanity, but specifically, normally, the command of Hajj is for able person. So financially, a person has that amount of wealth. So we should not burden ourselves. If it is not fars on you and you don't have the financial ability, then it is not compulsory. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made it arm to say that even though Hajj is only for a believer who is financially able, there is no blockages, no barriers to get to Hajj and you are physically able as well, then only Hajj is compulsory as if Allah is saying ala nas but if it is possible then like how you are coming for Hajj even the person who is not coming for Hajj and a person who doesn't have Iman my, my desire, my calling is that all of you, the whole of mankind should be running, should be rushing to find us Allah. When you are coming to the Baytullah and you come into the house of Allah, make your heart house Allah Rabbul Alameen. So if every kafir does believer to become a believer and every believer to become strong and steadfast in Iman and Amal. So the purpose is to discover Allah. A person who is going for Hajj doesn't have to say, I am going for Hajj. No, I'm going to meet my Allah. I got a mulaqat, what my Allah? I got an appointment, what Allah? So this is special and this is unique and this is the, 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 the flavor of Hajj. So these special words have been used specifically for Hajj. Likewise, in all other ibadat, Buni al-Islamu ala khamsin. The basis of deen are these five shahada that a person must clean their hearts. Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah. Clean your heart from everything else. La ilaha. Clean up this heart. If you really want Allah in your heart and clean it up. So you got the shahada of cleaning first. Allah, impregnate Allah in your heart and Muhammadur Rasulullah on the pattern internally. You got yaqeen and iman in the zat of Allah and externally on the way of Nabi alayhi salatu was salam. Then a person now who has this Allah in their heart needs to show Allah they are genuine. So they cleanse themselves outwardly through hudu because they want to cleanse themselves internally. And then they go to the musalla, to the masjid. That's a type of uh, sacrifice where you leave your home, a small hijrat for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then that salah when you start is a ma'raj, it is a mulaqat. It is a meeting to the Salah. Then to show you are genuine, you've given your life for Allah through Salah. Now you need to give your wealth as well. You've given your life, you've given your wealth, but to put quality and to value in that. So a person wants to build a building, they're given time to build in it, they spend the money to build it, but to make it complete, you will need abstinence and that's where fasting comes to accelerate because a person who is working, if he's eating all the time, if he's sleeping all the time, nothing will happen. So fasting now accelerates the salah and the zakah value and a person who wants to have good health needs to abstain. The doctor said take this medication, salah and zakah. And that's why ulama say, ذَلِكَ الْكِتَابُ لَا رَيْبَ fi. This is the book where there is no doubt. And you want hidayat, this is a nuskha of hidayat. الَّذِينَ يُؤْمِنُونَ بِالْغَيْبِ إِيمَانِ شَهَادَتِ وَيُقِيمُونَ الصَّلَاةِ 
establish salah and they spend which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has bestowed on them. So one is your salah and spending. Salah is jani qurbani, give your life and uh, spending is mali qurbani, give your wealth. Ula'ika ala hudam mi rabbihim wa ula'ika humul muflihun. So that is where fasting comes is the culmination and the final completion and the climax is the Hajj which combines all of this. If you made Shahada then this is a Shahada in front of Allah. If you made sacrifice, Salah, a mini Hijrat then this is a great Hijrat where you leave your house not temporarily but for a long period with Mujahada and sacrifice even zakah you spend a small amount then this is a big spending for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So a person who's been pabund and it's another lesson that I'm not waiting to go for Hajj and then I will change, then I will make tilawat of Quran, then I will make dhikr, then I will make a dua. All these ibadat should have been in place. A person should make a niyyah. Now I will be in the masjid five times a day, salat wa the jamaat takbir ula safi ula. Likewise, the dhikr of Allah, likewise, tilawat of Quran, likewise, dua. All the amal, the culmination of these amal will be witness in the ayyam of Hajj. And it is such a great amal that there is no surah of zakah, there is no surah salah, there is no surah sawm, but there is a surah of Hajj to show how important of a journey, a spiritual journey this is for a believer. So, qast. We need to correct our intention first that now immediately I will make the change. Immediately I will change my routine, I will change my system, I will change my perspective. Either I'm making a spiritual journey or just a physical ritual to go for fulfill my Hajj and say I did a Hajj. Either I'm going to fulfill a command or I'm going to find the commander of this command, Allah Rabbul Alameen. Either it's just rituals or reach Allah. Either I'm going to change for five or six weeks, or I make a qast, an intention to change for life. Either I'm going to go there and fill my bags with different items, I'll be in the malls, I'll be in the shopping centers and I will fill my bags or I will fill my life, my heart with the noor of hidayat and guidance. Either I'm going to draw from the ATM or I'm going to draw from the khazana and the treasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Either it's a journey of a tourist, of a selfies, of videos, of show, to show the people on earth or instead of selfies I'll be selfless and instead of speaking to the creation and showing the creation I will speak to Allah, I will show the one in the heavens, I will be not be doing show for people on earth. Either I'm going to be avarice for enjoyment, for luxuries, for comforts and I will desire iyaka wa tana'um, beware of the life of luxuries. If you want to be a close servant of Allah, don't seek luxury and comfort. Or I am going to seek enjoyment and pleasure in ibadat and in worship. I will get the luxury of ibadah. So my target is it the place of luxury, the people of luxury, Gabshab and speaking La Ya'ani. Well, what's my target? Am I targeting Allah Rabbul Alameen? Am I there to find Allah? So a person who does not find fault with the place, 
He does not find fault with the people. He does not find fault with the agents. He does not find fault with the food. He does not find fault with temperature. He does not find fault with the facilities. He does not find fault with the means of conveyance. But he starts finding fault with himself, with nafs, with shaitan, and he targets himself. He is on the road of progress. But when you start targeting everybody else, then we are on the path of retrogression. We are not looking for pleasures of this world. Those who look for pleasures of this world are deprived of the pleasures of the Akhirah. Those who are looking to sacrifice for Allah will be eligible to find Allah on the road to the Beloved. You need to prove that you are genuine and attention should not go anywhere else. So Allah has kept pleasure, enjoyment, comfort in his deen. Hassan Basri rahimallah you say, Tafaqad, seek al-halawa fi thalathati ashya in three things, fi salah wal-Qur'an wal-dhikr. You will find enjoyment in salah, in Qur'an, in dhikr. Fa'in wajadta dhalika famdhi wabshir. If you found it, then you are fortunate, you are the special few. Wa fa'lam anna babaka mughlaq. Then know your door to Allah is closed. Fa'alij fathahu. So make sure you find a way to open this barrier. Malana Ilyas was traveling, they reached a journey. All his companions were exhausted. They requested Maulana to uh, rest and take a break. He gave permission. They all went to recuperate and rest and relax. Maulana engaged in Salah as it was time to leave. The brother said, Hazrat, we rested and we are well. You must be very tired. Hazrat replied, what you got in your sleeping and in your relax re relaxation I got in my salah, Ya Bilal, Arihna, Arihna. Nabi Alayhi Salaam told Hazrat Bilal radiallahu anhu, uh, bring comfort, bring solace, O oh Bilal, O oh Bilal, bring this comfort, bring this sol solace. Ibn Qayyim used to say, Inna muhabbat Allah, to know where will wajh, when you got this love of Allah, you'll see the light on the face. وَتَشْرَحْ sadr, It will open your chest. وَتُحْيِ qalb, And it will bring the dead hearts alive. وَكَذَلِكَ مَحَبَّةُ الْقُرْآنِ Likewise the love for Qur'an. وَإِذَا أَرَدْتَ أَنْ تَعْلَمْ مَا عِنْدَكَ وَعِنْدَ غَيْرِكَ مِنْ مَحَبَّةِ اللَّهِ What's the criteria and the yardstick to know if you really have the love of Allah. فَانْذُرْ مَحَبَّةَ الْقُرْآنِ مِنْ قلبك. Look. If you have love for Qur'an in your heart, how much time in the day are you spending with Qur'an? سِمَاعَهُ And your desire to listen to Qur'an مِنَ الْإِلْتِزَازِ أَصْحَابِ الْمَلَاهِ وَالْغِنَى How you love to listen to companions and la يَعْنِي and listen to the musicians and listen to the sports scores and listen to the Hollywoods and Bollywoods of this world which is more beloved. فَإِنَّهُ مِنَ الْمَعْلُومِ It is known مَنْ أَحَبَّ حَبِيبًا When you love somebody كَانَ كَلَامُهُ وَحَدِيثُهُ أَحَبَّ شَيْئًا إِلَيْهِ Then speaking to them is the most beloved thing. If you really have love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then you would have been talking to Allah through tilawat of Qur'an and you would have uh, uh, talked to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through salah. So a person should uh, see whether he is doing things correctly. We think we're doing things correctly, but we're far from the truth. 
The teacher asked the student, did your father help you do your homework last night? He said, no, he did it all. We think so, we are on Haq, but we are far away from Haq. We are so far away from Deen. We don't realize how far we are, which chapter we are, uh, and which page we are on. We don't even have a clue. The teacher asked the school children to talk about what had happened exciting recently. A small boy put up his hand and announced, my father fell down a mine shaft last week. The teacher was shocked, oh dear, is he okay, is he fine? The boy said he must be. He stopped yelling for help yesterday. He stopped yelling for help yesterday. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us the understanding and tawfiq to practice the amalis when going for hajj. We should make a niyyah that we pass away there. Nabi alayhi salam has said, Man kharja hajjan famata o kama qal. You go for hajj, you pass away. Kutiba lahu ajrul haji ila yawm al qiyamah. Till the day of qiyamah, a reward for hajj will be written. Wa akhiru da'wana an alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen.